This drug service tracker is a tool related to the action plan for stroke in Europe, where we annually make a survey on the uh, status on stroke care and on stroke in the uh, European countries. This year we had responses from 42 countries. So, and when I'm saying this year, it means for the 2022 data. Uh, what we do is that we look at very basic things like the number of strokes, number of men and women with stroke mortality and things like that. But then we also look at the key performance indicators of action plan uh, and to see how, how countries perform. And uh, that, that was made public yesterday on the 14th on the uh, European Stroke Awareness Day. And everybody uh, can go and access this if they go to action plan, Google action plan, then they get to, to the right place. So basically, this is kind of a thermometer on how stroke care is doing in Europe. I think the most important thing is that we see progress. Um, we see progress uh, if we look at our overarching targets for the action plan for stroke in Europe, which are the number of strokes, which include uh, access to stroke unit care. It includes having a national stroke plan and last but not least, a plan for primary prevention. And we do not, the number of strokes in Europe is constant so far for the last three years. But we do see progress as to access to stroke care, stroke unit care. We see progress as to having a national stroke plan and to a plan for primary prevention. And the last two are the really, really important things because those are the instruments for planning and improving stroke care. So I'm really very optimistic. Even though there are certainly also aspects for which optimism is not really uh, required. If we look at it, the acute care is really, I mean, everything could always be better. I'm not saying anything like that. But we have like 14.6% of all people with an ischemic stroke in Europe, uh, they received IVT thrombolysis in 2022. About 6% of people with an ischemic stroke had the treatment for a large vessel occlusion that is mechanical thrombectomy. So these are very, very nice figures, but there's a massive inequity between countries. And I'm also aware that within a number of countries there's very good access to acute treatment in, in urban areas whereas in um, remote or urban or rural areas the access is insufficient. There's also significant inequity between countries. Some countries have uh, the option or the possibility of giving like 30% of their population with ischemic stroke thrombolysis whereas in other countries it's less than a percent. So, so we need to, 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 to increase the level in the countries that are lacking behind. And if we look at rehabilitation, if we look at life after stroke programs, it's really a sad story because very, very few countries actually provide or at least are able to document that they provide just basic rehabilitation options and follow up. And it is really necessary to follow up after stroke because you, you know you have a lot of risk factors you need to control. You can have uh, expected complications like pain or spasticity and things like that. And you need to see people to diagnose this and to treat it. So there's a lot there's a lot of issues we need to work on, but there's certainly also progress and there's also stories of success. In 2020, I think it was 31 countries that contributed, and now it was 42 countries in 2022. And we hope, and you know, that there are 52 countries in WHO Europe region, and we do hope to, to have all of them included. Uh, but, but some of them are really small, very small areas, but still we want them included. We want everybody to be part of the uh, SABI family.